It's been dubbed as the gangland trial of the century and Jerry the Monk Hutch faces a delay in his trial over the murder of David Byrne after very significant evidence came to light. Hutch was clean shaven, dressed in a white shirt and tan trousers and he sat quietly with headphones on in the dock of the special criminal court as the building outside was surrounded by armed guards throughout the day. On Monday 3rd of October the trial got underway shortly after 2pm and following the earlier sentencing hearing of Jonathan and Patrick Dowdle who have pleaded guilty to facilitating the murder of David Byrne. The trial heard that the murder charge against Jonathan Dowdle had been dropped. However, the trial of Hutch now faces a delay over what the court heard was the addition of new evidence in the case over the past week. The three-judge non-jury court granted a delay of a week in which it will be then seen where the parties are at. Hutch was extradited from Spain after his arrest there and was remanded in custody until next Monday. Jonathan Dowdle's life is over after giving a statement to guards implicating others in the Regency Hotel attack the court heard yesterday. The former Sinn Féin councillor has made himself available to be a witness in the trial of Jerry the Monk Hutch who is accused of the murder of David Byrne on the 5th of February 2016. The 44 year old is currently under protection along with his family and will never probably live in Ireland again and is under assessment for witness protection. Amid huge security, Dowdle and his father Patrick were before Mr Justice Tony Hunt at the non-jury special criminal court for a sentencing hearing on the 3rd of October. The pair last week pleaded guilty to facilitating the murder of Byrne at the Regency Hotel on the 5th of February 2016 as part of the Hutch Kinahan feud. They did this before making a room available for the criminal organisation or its members the night beforehand. Ahead of the hearing, every person who entered the courtroom had to give ID and have their names taken before being granted access. Outside, there was heavily armed guards patrolling the area and they manned all the entrances and exits. Plain clothed guards wearing earpiece communication devices were dotted around the chamber. The father and son entered and were flanked by two plain clothes police officers. They took their seats in the dock and watched the proceedings intently, with Jonathan Dowdle often putting his head down. The former politician had been accused of murder, but that charge, as I said, has been dropped. Detective Sergeant Patrick O'Toole took to the stand and agreed with the senior counsel defence, Michael O'Higgins, that in November last year, the accused made it clear he wanted to speak to guards. Dowdle was in prison custody serving a jail sentence at the time, but when that expired in April, he was handed bail on the charge he was facing in relation to the Regency attack. For a short period after that and there was another meeting also before cops checked out what he had said and the information he supplied. Detective Sergeant O'Toole said he believed Dowdle was sincere and genuine and a formal statement was taken last week. The court further heard he is now available for the forthcoming trial as a witness. Mr O'Higgins said he has implicated other persons and that is potentially of interest to the prosecution but this has had very dark consequences for the father and son, along with family members who are under guard protection, with an assessment establishing the risk against them is severe. The younger Dowdle is also being assessed for the witness protection programme in which someone is given a new identity and moved overseas. Mr O'Higgins claimed due to the circumstance of the case, a suspended sentence could be appropriate. He said he has made himself available as a witness, which means his life is over. No justice is done by giving him a suspended sentence. The court heard while Jonathan Dowdle knew the Hutch family from the young age of 15, he was not a member of any criminal organisation. The prosecution gave details of his offences in relation to the Regency attack. Senior counsel for the state was told how room 2014 of the Regency Hotel was booked using Patrick Dowdle's credit card. He later claimed to guards he cancelled the room but the court heard CCTV showed him arriving on February the 4th 2016, the day before the murder, being given two key cards and then directions to the room. He went there for a short time before leaving and meeting his son. The key cards were then passed on. The room is believed to have been used by Kevin Murray who died of a motor neuron disease back in 2017. He was known as Flat Cap as he was seen on CCTV approaching and entering the room. On the morning of the shooting, Murray left the hotel room with a hold all bag and was picked up by a taxi and went into the city. The boxing event was scheduled to start at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. At around 20 past 2, a Ford Transit van pulled up at the hotel 
and Murray and a man dressed as a woman emerged some time after and went into the hotel. Except Sergeant O'Toole said a boxer was having his way in, completed with a number of shots were fired. People were running and panicked towards the large function room and these two individuals gave chase towards those who were fleeing. At around half two, the same silver Ford transit van pulled up in the front of the hotel and three individuals dressed as guards, armed with assault rifles, went into the hotel. They discharged their guns as they ran inside. Byrne ran from the suites area to the reception where he was shot by two of the gunmen. The silver van carrying the men then travelled to the nearby Charlemont estate where it was burnt out. Detective Sergeant O'Toole agreed that the officers had particular knowledge of the Hutch criminal organisation and their strong intergenerational family bonds. The court heard that Jonathan and Patrick Dowdle had previous convictions for false imprisonment, threatening to kill and causing serious harm from January 2015. Jonathan had spent most of his life in Dublin. Detective Sergeant O'Toole agreed he was always hard working and ran an electrician company from 2007 which was very successful and he was regarded as an employer. The court heard Dowdle took loans from the Hutch family and that his mother borrowed money for stock in 2007 but was not in a position to repay it. Mr Huygens said sometimes members of the Hutch family wanted to purchase things online such as holidays and he explained it was not unusual for the Dowdles to pay these sums and they would be reimbursed. That would give a fair summary of the relationship that existed between them. But Detective Sergeant O'Toole agreed Dowdle was not part of any criminal organisation. When he was interviewed, the court heard that he had volunteered to travel with Patsy Hutch to Spain in 2015 when his son Gary was killed. Michael Bauman, the defence for Patrick Dowdle, also asked the court to consider giving his client a suspended sentence given the exceptional circumstances he now finds himself in. So guys, especially those over from Ireland, what do you think with regards to this story? The ex Sinn Féin counsellor, Jonathan Dowdle, has turned state witness. So the Witness Protection Programme, or in Ireland, as it's called, the Witness Security Programme, was introduced as part of the investigation into the murder of Veronica Guerin. And the first people to enter the programme were Russell Warren, Charles Bowden and John Dunn. And it's believed that they are still part of that programme. So usually what happens is, from Ireland, they send people to English-speaking countries, so that's either the UK, the USA, Canada, Australia, South Africa, mainly because obviously that will help them settle more. New identities are given to the people within the passport system. It's believed that as long as they're part of that programme, it is the state that pays for them. They are given the money because they're pretty much asked to pack their jobs, lives and move abroad. They're encouraged to find jobs or to find work if they can. But as, as far as I'm aware, it's the state that pays. So guys, there's a little bit with regards to what the Witness Protection Programme over in Ireland. Let me know what you think with regards to this story, you guys. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked. Keep it real.